Hey, what is up, my real fam? It's Queen Bay, but you can call me Debbie, and I am back with another video. Today is going to be 100 bunch of first world problems, so if you're offended by people talking about first world problems, I'm sorry, I can't help you. That's what this video is about. But as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about traveling problems, or just the things that stuck about travel. Stuck? The things that suck about traveling, all the struggles that come with the time between you, where you leave, like your house, to the, you finally reach your destination, wherever that may be in the world, that time period in between is just hell. Like it never just goes smoothly. There's always something going on at airports, especially like Pearson. Oh my god, Pearson. But what's worse is Chicago O'Hare. Chicago O'Hare Airport has... I don't ever want to go to that airport anymore. But you understand more once we get into all like the things that suck about traveling and the airport aspect specifically and my experience and stuff like that. So if you can relate, you should probably stay in this video. And even if you've never traveled, don't let this like throw you out from traveling. Traveling is amazing. Like I've never traded in for anything. But you should still watch. It's an interesting video talking about my experiences and probably how you guys can avoid it. Maybe half these things are my fault, but I'll get into it. Like I said, my social media is always in the description. But yeah, let's get into this video. Yeah. 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 This one really depends on how far you're going. Like if you're just going to the States and you live in Canada, this is not as, but if you're going like, actually, you know, it doesn't really depend. It kind of varies, but you always feel like you're overpacking or you're underpacking. Either you feel completely overpacked or underpacked and like you have absolutely nothing. And usually it's the, I usually have either nothing or I have everything that I end up not wearing any of it. And it sucks because like either you get to where you're going and you realize, I literally forgot my entire wardrobe. I have nothing to wear. You wear the exact same things for like three days straight because you didn't plan out your outfits. You just threw in a little bit of everything, but nothing goes together. Like that sucks so bad. They even happened even I went to the Deca like two weekends ago and I packed enough clothes. We were going for three days. So I'm like, let me just pack a good amount. I had nothing. I wore the exact same jeans for like three days. I wore the exact same socks for two days. I wore like the same shirt a bunch of times because I do not plan. And a lot of those clothes that I wore, I bought there because I do not plan. Every single time. I never have enough clothes or I have too much. And it's too heavy. Like, why can't I be a good middle, Debbie? Why don't you know how to pack, Debbie? Like, what's wrong with you? Another thing about airports is if you've ever flown on, like, an international flight, um, your checked baggage has a weight limit. And it's usually between 50 to 60 pounds. And you get two bags of 50 to 60 pounds per person in a family, plus a carry-on, plus a purse. Which seems like a lot, but if you're going internationally for more than three weeks, it is not a lot. Trust me, because some things weigh more than you would think. You'd think like a sweater weighs nothing, but for some reason, when you have two sweaters, it like triples in weight. But I don't know how that happens. But you pack as much as you think and you weigh it, because I got that at home scale and I'm ch checking, I'm like, oh, 49 pounds, like I'm one pound under, like it's perfect. Those are wrong, okay? Because you get to the airport and you put it on the scale when you're checking in, and they're just like, I'm sorry, but this bag weighs a little bit too much. We can't check your baggage into the plane. This weighs uh, 50.89 pounds. You're gonna have to take about 80.89 pounds out of that bag. And you're just like, so um, am I supposed to throw out my clothing or throw like my important products or something? I'm, I'm not sure what you want me to do. I know there's safety reasons behind it, but like, so you're just there like, throwing your bag open, your gate closes soon, the check-in closes soon, cause you're late, cause I'm always late. I feel like people are late, I'm just late all the time. And you're like ripping your bag open and playing Tetris. You're playing Tetris with all your stuff and like looking around, like reorganizing things to try to make them fit better and not weigh as much. And then the person you're with, usually like it smells like my mother. So we start trading bags and stuff like, yo let me give you this and make your bag lighter. And you're just playing Tetris in front of everyone, ripping your bag open. This has happened to me every single time I travel internationally. It's never just been like smooth, like, oh, weighs perfectly, let's go. No, it's been like, yo, take your bag over to the side and empty it, just throw stuff out. Because I don't know how to pack. So I end up throwing stuff out. We actually done that. I've had to throw stuff out because it always weighs over. I don't know how many times you weigh it, it always weighs over. Because those last minute two or three things that you forget end up going in last and you go over. And it sucks every time. Delays. This is what I talk about Chicago O'Hare. Don't ever travel in the winter to Chicago O'Hare Airport. Last time I traveled there, the weather was insane. I literally was in an airport for over 12 hours. And the thing about that is the day before, our flight was even canceled, so they put us in a hotel. Not for free, 
discount price, which I think they should have put us for free. It's not our fault that our flight was canceled and we're stuck in Chicago for an extra night. And the person we are staying with lives so far from the airport, we're not gonna make them drive back an hour, drive there and drive back in the morning. That doesn't make any sense. So you stay in the air, like the hotel, like, okay, our flight's tomorrow morning, whatever, we'll be out. We get to the hotel, I mean, hotel, yeah. We eat, whatever, go to sleep, wake up, next morning, go to the airport, we already checked out. Guess what happened? Your flight's delayed. Um, we'll get you another flight in like two hours, something like that. So we're like, okay, whatever, like it's two hours, like it's not that bad. And like, okay, sorry, but your flight's canceled again. And we're like, oh, so are we supposed to leave? Cause we're already checked through security. And basically once you're checked through security, like you can leave, but once you leave the airport, you have to go through everything again. And that's just not gonna work out. So we're just like, okay, so let's just hang around. I shit you not, I was in the airport for 12 hours. And what ended up happening is with me, my mom, and my oldest brother, we had to, oh my god, there's a plane flying over. Of course there is. Don't make any noise, I hope you can't hear that. But me and mom ended up having to leave earlier than my brother and leave my older brother. He's like in his 20s, so it's not that big of a deal. But we had to leave him in Chicago while we got on a flight to go back, and we got to where I live now at 3 a.m. in the morning. We were supposed to get there literally at like 3 p.m. We got there at 3 a.m. in the morning and my brother had to stay in Chicago overnight to wait for the next morning flight. Why? Why can't I just be like, let's get on a flight? And even when I went to New York, there was literally a delay because New York airport, um, JFK is when I went to, mm, yeah, or LaGuardia, I don't really know. But like they couldn't accept any more planes because there was just too many flights coming into New York because like everyone wants to be in New York and we had to wait, but that wasn't that bad. But the O'Hare one really killed me. That really, that really killed me. If you're going to third world country, people ask you some dumbass shit. They ask you, oh, you're going to Africa? Don't you need to get your shot so you make sure you don't like die of like AIDS or like, aren't you gonna get like malaria or something? Like, aren't you worried about all the bugs and stuff? Like, where are you staying? Are you staying on a resort? Like, is that safe to stay in the town? Like, isn't everyone like homeless? No, 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 no. If you don't know anything about a country, do not, do not, do not ask them dumb questions you think may be offensive because most likely they will. Do not ask me some questions about where I'm like, no, I'm not gonna get malaria. Like, don't do those set of things. They're not okay. Like going to Africa, obviously not every single person in Africa is poor. Yes, Africa is one of the poorer countries, but not every single person there is poor. People live in houses there and have food and have money and have jobs. Okay, don't ask me some dumb ass shit about third world countries just because you don't know anything, okay? That was a little sassy, but I just had to put that out there, okay? I just had to put that out there. When you get back to school, you've literally missed World War III. You have six assignments due, two tests to do the day you arrive, three people have gone in fights, like six people are just like disappeared, seven people are suspended, like your teacher got fired, like a bunch of things happen for some reason. As soon as you leave, like everything happens. You have so much homework when you get back and that sucks so much. Because like, you can't control always when you travel during the year because sometimes times are cheaper than others, so you go when they're cheaper. And if that happens to be just before exams, you're stuck, because when you get back, you know you know absolutely nothing and that you're gonna fail your classes because you didn't study, because who's gonna study on their vacation? And any teacher that gives you like work over like a break while you're on vacation does not care about you and they hate you and want you to fail because no one on vacation is going to go be like, hey, I'm on vacation, let's go to the beach and I'm just gonna pull up my math homework and instead of going in the water and enjoying the sun, I'm gonna do my math homework because that's what's important in life. Having long layovers is worse. Whenever I've traveled to Ghana, I always stop over in Europe, somewhere you have Amsterdam or London, but you can't really leave the airport because six hours is not enough to leave the airport and be back and do security before your flight, especially if you don't have anyone you know there. But like spending six hours in an airport sucks, like so bad. Cause you just have to like sit around and like wait for your flight to finally start boarding. And it's so boring every time to just wait for your flight. Like, <laughs> it's usually cheaper that way. Or you can do a straight 12 hour flight, but I'm not trying to sit on a plane for 12 hours. Six hours for me is even enough, but layovers, long layovers. And usually you can't just sleep anywhere because you just feel like everyone's watching you. Or you do fall asleep and then you wake up, it's only been 30 minutes. And you can't really go back to sleep because you're already awake. That's great, that's just amazing. Whenever there's turbulence, you feel like you're about to die. 
like the minute a plane just like starts slightly vibrating or like shaking or they say we're flying into some wind there's gonna be some turbulence here mine just goes immediately like oh my god we're crashing like the wing fell off like their, their engines are gonna stop like everything's wrong we're gonna crash in the middle of the ocean no one's gonna find my body we're gonna disappear it's gonna end up like lost we're gonna have to eat each other we're gonna be on the top of a mountain it's gonna be so crazy and then we're gonna be my family again you just start thinking about the craziest things because turbulence equals death I don't know about you, but like, I can't be calm during turbulence. I can't just think, oh, just turbulence. Like, that's nothing. Like, it's gonna be fun. Like, we're just gonna keep flying. Nope, turbulence. Spooky. Don't like it. It's the worst thing. You just, you just, I say everything's the worst thing. These all are really shitty things. But like, it starts violent shaking, and you're like, you start writing your will to your family about like all the things you want them to do and like what they want you to have. I have nothing but like what you want them to have and everything because you're like, I'm about to die. My life is over. Turbulence equals death. People kicking chairs. What is wrong with you? Why would you kick someone else's chair? Sometimes it's children, sometimes adults just like to put their feet up against it. Please do not kick my chair. If I lean back, I'm trying to sleep. And by you kicking my chair, you're not helping my sleep. And me on a flight, angry people all over the flight, you do not want to do such a thing. So please, if you're one of those people who kick the shirt, just kick the shirts, kick the chairs, don't do it anymore. PSA for me, take it from a queen. Don't do it, it's not worth it, it's not nice. I'm not a fan of people who do that. But the absolute worst thing with traveling is the fact that you have to go home. And it's usually like, if you're going to like stay with family, is that the first week is usually just like getting into like the groove of being in a different country and just like finding what you're going to be doing and stuff like that. And then by the second week you're doing stuff and by the third week usually you're getting towards going home and that always sucks because it's such a bittersweet thing because it's like you're prepared to go home and you're excited to see all your friends again but you don't want to leave like the beautiful country you're in and everything and it's so sad like honestly it kills me but you know. All good things that come to an end. And that is all that I have for you guys in today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and get to relate to some of these traveling things. Like I said, I absolutely love traveling. I would not give up traveling or going places for anything in the world. These are just some issues I face going through the airports and how annoying the airports are and everything. But all in all, traveling's great. I love going to different countries and I assume my goal in life is to go to like as many places as possible. Like I think seeing the world is like so important and experiencing different cultures and being woke and whatever. I am sound terrible, whatever. You get what I mean, okay? But yeah, I said to talk about that and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and yeah. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Keep smiling, shining, and remember you don't need a crown be royalty. Bye!